What's up guys, today we're going to be ranking every Arduino board I've ever used and then some on this tier list right here. Let's get started. First up, we have the Arduino Mega. Now, this is the this is the big uh, Chungus board. It's got like 54 ports on it, so you can definitely connect a, a lot of devices. Honestly, it's a it's a really good board. Lots of program space, lots of ports, lots of everything. It's just a big board. Honestly, this is this is A or S tier. I'm not sure which yeah which it should be. I'm gonna set it in A tier for now. If we don't have enough S tiers, then I'll move it up because that's what we do. But for now, I think A tier is a fair place to put it. Um, the Arduino Micro. The Arduino Micro is, um, yeah, it's a good board. I just used this for the game controller project, which you definitely want to check out if you haven't yet. But it has this nice feature. It's one of the boards that has a nice feature where it can interface with the computer as a uh, human interface device. So basically, on an Arduino board, there's two different chips. The one chip is the brain, which does the... Um, the actual calc like it figures out the program it performs the program and then there's the communication chip which communicates with the computer so most arduino boards have like the regular a tier communication device which allows for you know serial communication print this get this message from the serial monitor back and forth that kind of stuff and of course power over the usb port or whatever but the uh the upgraded chip the s tier chip that's in the Arduino Micro allows you to actually send better communication so you can have um, it be like a mouse or a joystick or a full game controller or something like that. So for that, I think I'm going to have to put it S tier. It's basically like a souped up Arduino Nano. Um, a couple less ports, I think, but it has that better communication device, which is really cool because you can uh, do some cool communication stuff with that. And I think it's similarly priced, so that's nice as well. Um, we yeah, we might want to take price into account here as well. I think the mega is also good bang for buck um, We can yeah, we can check on these but I think the Arduino mega is Good bang for buck compared to like the uno or something. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. I could be wrong This one is this one is 21 though. I I'm basing most of these comparisons probably on the Arduino uno because that's kind of the, the basic one and I'm gonna be using Amazon because honestly the clones are if you find a decent clone, then it's that's not Arduino brand, then you're going to be just fine, and it's way cheaper. So if I can find uh, if I can find something on Amazon that looks like a decent clone, then that's what we'll compare it against. Um, here we go, Elegoo. Elegoo is a good brand. They make Arduino clones, and uh, I've never had any issues with any of theirs. So the Elegoo Uno, seventeen dollars for just. Four more dollars, you can get the full 54 ports at the Mega. I would say that's a great deal. Honestly, I think this is S tier. Um, the Arduino Nano, it's it's decent, all right? It's decent. It has it's smaller than the Uno board, right? So you can fit the same, basically the same functionality as the Uno in a smaller space. So it's it's probably A tier, right? Because sometimes you need a smaller board. This is probably the cheapest small board you can get. And yeah, it's pretty small. You can fit it in a lightsaber or something like that. And it's it's awesome. Um, then the Arduino Uno. This is the OG. I'm I'm tempted. I'm tempted to put it S tier. Um, I honestly am. Just because it's so, you know, it's such a classic. But I think I think to be fair, it should be in the A tier because it's a good board. It's a great for beginners. It's the one that everyone's using, so it's easy to find tutorials on and whatnot. But it has the same functionality as the nano. And it takes up a little bit more space. So should we really put it that much higher? I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Our next board is uh, this little guy here. This is the uh, Seeduino, I believe. Seeduino uh, Xiao with three E's. And it's it's basically a, a mega tiny board. Like it's, it's super tiny. It's really nice. For fitting in those uh, small projects. I use this for like a sonic screwdriver project, another cool project you can check out. And it has a similar, like it's got 11 IO pins, right? So it's not that far behind the Uno or the uh, Nano. They each have 20. Um, but it does does only run at 3.3 volts. That's a good thing to note. All of these that we've classified so far, I believe run at f the full 5 volts. 
So they can, you know, use all the devices because you can use five or 3.3. Um, some devices like this board here only run at, obviously you can plug five volts into the USB port, but they can, they can only output 3.3 volts. So if you have one of those devices that needs a full five volts, you won't be able to run it with this, like a relay. Often the relays need five volts to toggle. Uh, you won't be able to swing that with this little board. So that's unfortunate, but other than that, it has it has more program storage and more RAM than the even the Arduino Mega, I think. Um, it has a lot of program storage, and it's again, it's tiny. Uh, the only thing that might hit it is the cost. I think it's a little more expensive than uh, one of these. I think it's like 14 bucks, whereas the Nano, you could get it for something like 6 The Micro is something like 10 or something like that. And obviously, we saw that the Arduino Uno was 17 and this one was 21. So, yeah, it's a really good choice. Of the small boards, it's one of the more expensive, probably the most expensive. But it's it's so tiny and it has a such good program space and RAM that you can really do a lot with it. Um, okay. <laughs> Whew. There's a stark contrast between this one and the next small board. So this is the ATtiny88, I think. ATtiny88. Um, I'll just search that. Yeah, this is it. It's okay. So imagine if you took an Arduino Nano and then you just wanted to modify it a little bit and make it as cheap as possible. These boards are literally two dollars. You can get them for a similar price even on Amazon. You can get one like four for eight dollars. That's what I did. The downside is the Arduino ID doesn't have support built in for these boards. And you have to go through this whole process of uh, like manually doing a whole bunch of like they just they basically don't work. They basically don't work. You go through a bunch of hassle to kind of make them work, but they basically don't work to upload programs to. And if you can, if you can get it working right, I would I would put it in C tier, right? But if you can get it working, it still has the tiny program space, a quarter of the size of an Arduino Nano quarter of that size. I mean, that's why it's, a, you know, a third the price or something like that. But it has a program space a quarter of the size, basically no RAM, the RAM is tiny, and it's really difficult to get the programs uploaded to it. So that's an F tier in my opinion. It's just, it's a bad board. Um, don't recommend. It's four more dollars to get an Arduino Nano. I would, I would go for that if you're looking for something cheap. I did. I used one for the NeoPixel Saber, and that was I thought it was genius. A $2 Arduino board. What what could go wrong? That's what went wrong. That's what went wrong. The <laughs> the programs were incredibly difficult to upload and even once you did the it <laughs> tiny program space. I couldn't I couldn't fit for the NeoPixel Saber, the finished program that I designed to get all of the different colors and color changing, not that big of a program. Maybe like half the Arduino Nano space. Double this thing space. Absolutely no way to cut it down. If you wanted to get a program like that running, you had to like half the number of LEDs you were controlling. And even then, because the RAM was so small, trying to fit that array into the RAM to actually do the editing of those LEDs, a disaster. An absolute disaster. Uh, just don't. Don't do it. Unless you know for sure that you're using a tiny program and you want to go through the hassle of that upload, don't do it. F to your board. All the way. The next one is an Arduino Leonardo. So this is, um, it's kind of, this is the, is this the Leonardo? Yeah, yeah, it's the Leonardo. So it's kind of like an Arduino Uno, but again, it has the, um, the same USB communication chip as the Arduino Micro. So it has the one that can communicate with the computer and be like a computer mouse or a game controller or something like that. Now, because of that, I think it's a little bit more expensive. Let's search for Arduino Leonardo. Um, okay, it actually might be a similar price. Amazon. Um, and then Elegoo or something, something like that. Okay, so it's actually, oh, it's actually a good, it's actually a good price. This is an Elegoo, this is something slightly different, but, um, it, it's a similar price, so I would actually say that's that's a surprise to me because it has the better USB communication chip. So honestly, it's it's got to be at least A tier because it's got the functions of the Uno plus the extra communication chip. So I mean that's a win. I don't 
I don't think it's quite S tier because it's not on the level of like the micro, which has small form factor plus USB chip or the mega, which just has a ton of ports or the Arduino Xiao, which is tiny. I don't think it's on that level, but I think it's, it might be a little bit better than the Uno. Honestly, I don't know of any drawbacks with it. Maybe there's drawbacks. Um, oh, let's make sure it's not just 3.3 volt only. Arduino uh, Leonardo. Let's look at Arduino's page and check. Because if it is only 3.3 volts, it's, it's yeah, it's definitely not going to be S tier. Um, okay, IO voltage is 5 volts. Yeah, so I'm, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to do S tier, but I think, think it deserves a solid A tier. A good, maybe the top of A tier, all the way to the left. Um, yeah, I think that's where it deserves. Okay, we have another subscribe button here, and yeah, this is this is another S tier, unless we have to move it around so that we can make all of the little lines even, which is obviously fun. Definitely subscribe if you haven't yet. It's a way to make sure that you don't miss videos on this channel, and you can keep getting your Arduino education every single day. The next board is the Arduino Do. So this is basically like the um, Arduino Mega, uh, it has the same 54 ports, but it has that upgraded uh, USB chip, but I think it's only, I think this is the one I was thinking of that's only 3.3 volts. Uh, I'm kind of hoping I'm wrong because it'd be kind of a, kind of a nice board if it's, if it's not that, but, ooh, 52. Okay, that's, whew, that's rough. That's rough. Let's see if we can find it from not the official Arduino because 52. Um, okay, yeah, that could be, that could be another, another issue. If we can't find this from anyone other than Arduino, and you have to buy it for 52, that's, it's going down. <laughs> $50 from someone else. Yeah, that's rough. Okay, forty two ninety eight. Yeah, so, I was gonna put this higher up. I was gonna put this A or S, because it's like the Mega, but you get the extra USB communication chip, but it's, it's not there. If you have to pay twice the price of the Mega, the Mega, we were finding one for like 21, right? If you have to pay twice that price, 42 to, okay, it's on sale right now, but if you have to pay nearly twice the price just to get that extra USB chip, and I think it's only 3.3 volts, could be wrong, let's search. I think it's only 3.3 volts, and you have to pay twice the price just to get that extra USB communication chip, that's not worth it. Hopefully, whatever your project is, you could just use a micro. Yeah, 3.3. Yeah, this is this is B tier. This is B tier. It's got the ports of the Mega, and it's got an extra special USB communication chip so it can emulate a keyboard or a mouse, but it's, yeah, it's, it's too expensive. And yeah, I am, I am looking at this table and feeling a little bit sad because we do not have an even number of boards to make this table perfectly even and rectangular. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, yeah, we may have to, we may have to try to dig up some other Arduino boards somewhere. If you guys know of any Arduino boards that we haven't covered, aside from these two, definitely drop them in the chat so we can try to get this thing straightened out. But next we have, uh, this is the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. So basically, they took an Arduino Nano and they added a Raspberry Pi, uh, chip to... So it has uh, better computing power, better RAM, better storage, and they added a couple of extra sensors. Now this thing, this thing costs a little bit more, um, more subscribe buttons. That's actually a great idea. Um, Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. The, okay, so this one costs a little bit more, but what they have done, and I want to get my hands on one of these because it sounds really awesome. They've added an IMU, so a, um, a bait like it's uh, a gyroscope and accelerometer to tell how it's moving and rotating. Um, they've added that. They've added Bluetooth connection. They've added Wi-Fi connection. All of these built into the board. And this thing is not not a whole lot. Okay, it's it's a bit more expensive. Let's see if we can find one on Amazon. Last time I checked, I I couldn't find one on Amazon. Arduino Nano RP twenty forty. I mean, aside from the Arduino one, but for a yeah, I don't think it's going to get a whole lot cheaper than that $21 price tag. Here's the seed board, by the way, $10. Um, yeah, so here's the one from Arduino, $31, even more expensive than their regular site. Um, and 
yeah, we're not really seeing this board here. So you have to shell out $22, right? Which is, it's a lot more than the $6 regular Arduino Nano. But you do get a um, an IMU, so you can tell acceleration and gyroscope, and you get Bluetooth connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity. And I think for a lot of projects, like in an upcoming lightsaber project, I think that could be worth it. It could be a really great option to get that rotation and movement detection along with Bluetooth connectivity to connect to an app or something like that, or Wi-Fi connectivity to have a little like web page thing. That could be really good. So I think I'm gonna put it A tier because it has really cool functionality, but the price isn't quite low enough for it to be an S tier, also four and four. Um, this is the Arduino uh, MKR0, so Arduino MKR0. I also haven't had my hands on one of these. Um, another one to check out. Now again, you'll notice it's expensive. These are kind of the modded boards with a little bit of extra functionality. Um, and um, yeah, I, I see the suggestion that we could put dislike buttons on the lower tiers. However, picture this. You sign on, you hop onto this stream, and you see a tier list with a four by five grid and there's like one two three there's like nine slots taken up by dislike buttons it would it would be a little weird it would be a little weird i like the suggestion but it would be a little bit weird so back to the um mkr zero uh i think it's maybe short for maker i actually just realized that the maker zero I, that makes sense um tech specs I think it only runs at 3.3 volts. It has, ooh, only eight I opens. That's tough, that's tough. That's tough to justify. So I think the reason is it has this SD card reader. So you can just directly put in a micro SD card, um, which is again, another thing. See, here's what I want. I want a board other than like the Profi board or something that's dedicated for lightsabers, but a board that has an SD card plus gyroscope plus Bluetooth. That's basically what a profi board is, except it costs $100. If we have a $20 board that also has the gyroscope, and we have a another basically $20 board, I think you can find one for 20, that also has the SD card reader, why can't we combine those together, right? SD card reader, Bluetooth, gyroscope, basically everything you need to make one. That's what the profi board is, basically everything you need to make a lightsaber, right? That's what the profi board is, but instead of costing twenty dollars, it costs a hundred. That uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But back to ranking the Arduino uh, Maker Zero, only eight pins, right? So if you if you if you want the SD card reader, this is probably a good deal because the SD card reader would add extra cost. This is simpler and it doesn't take up any extra space, so it's a really tight build. If you want an SD card. This is a great board for you. If you don't, which is probably most cases, it's not. I think I'm going to have to C tier it. Um, there's a very there's very specific use cases where you want an SD card reader, and in that case, go for it. But that's one case out of out of ten, out of twenty, one out of twenty cases. So yeah, that's that's going to put it a little bit lower. Plus, it's also between twenty and thirty dollars, so it's a little bit expensive. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here, and don't forget to join our live stream on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern.